I'd like to say thanks for everybody for their input on that 1990 Honda Accord. I actually got it in here and we fixed three things on it. Um, and then there's more to go, apparently. Four things on it. We did four things on it. Uh, I fixed the exhaust leak so it quit poisoning me and making me uh, lose brain cells. That was important. Um, we also fixed the ground, the negative cable, and the negative to body were both just incredibly corroded. So this is the negative terminal. Grounds are incredibly important on the 12 volt system. A significant amount of rust and then this is just really corroded. So we replaced those cables. Uh, we did some soldering. We got some rings put on them. As soon as that turns silver you're good to go to just dump this in. Still let it cool. And got it looking beautiful like this. A thousand times better. That's respectable. And then the other two things we did is we set the timing through the bell housing with a little removable plug where you just use the timing light in there. We got that set. And then the last thing that we did uh, was right in line with what y'all were saying with the oxygen sensors. So I had to get out my book. This is my old Bible that I used to use all the time back in the OBD1 era. In the early 90s, I'd always go to batauto.com. You know, Bruce Allen and Tony. Uh, it shows a guy at a computer, he's got wings or whatever. It was awesome. It's a great website. I really appreciate it. Bruce, Allen, Tony. Dude, you guys were like a heaven send. Now there's a lot more resources, including videos like this one. Um, a couple of ones that I like is Automotive Basics, they've got a good video on oxygen sensors and then of course Mandy from ADP Training um, and uh, Schrodinger's Box, Matt's got some good stuff on it too, check him out. Uh, but anyway, I had to break out my book, read the codes. So I found a paper clip with a 90 degree bend on it and I put it in as you see here. Here's what it looks like if you just turn the key on without running the vehicle. See it'll just do a quick flash like that. I think that's a code one because that's not slow. That should be like the ones place, like a code number one. So let me show you what I found online for that. Found this information on hondatech.com, which seems to be a good source for this sort of thing. That's oxygen sensor number one that it's saying. So once I found that out, I went down to the oxygen sensor. I'm checking to see if there's any issues with, you know, how long's the sensor been in there. Uh, apparently the owner put a new one in, but there was two plugs and I was trying to figure out why there was two plugs because there's no downstream oxygen sensor in there. So I thought maybe, you know, sometimes you'll have equipment that's not installed but there's wiring for it. The wires had been cut on the factory side, the orange and black, yellow, black, white, and blue and yellow wires uh, for the oxygen sensor and the owner basically spliced in using whatever color wires he had another plug that he got. He bought a used plug on eBay and spliced it in there. He also bought a used plug and a used map sensor come to find out and so we're gonna have to go back through that. Map sensors are easier because they're just three wires. You've just got your 5 volt reference, your signal wire and ground, and ground wire is usually in the middle. So then you just need to see which one's 5 volt and then you know the other one's your signal wire. On this one I had to draw a diagram, figure it all out. Um, I thought I had it figured out, but my carbon monoxide poisoned brain uh, didn't really do so hot, so I switched diagonally, which you don't do. Uh, oftentimes they go into the sensor diagonally from each other, the heater circuit ones. I basically confused the ground wires. I didn't know which one was the ground wire uh, for the heater circuit that is used when the car's in open loop, and I didn't know which was the ground for the signal. And so, long story short, I switched them. So I just pry that out and just hook it, don't lose it, we'll need it later. And then to get these wires out, you can see that there's a little spring-loaded thing at the top there. That just holds it down against the catch. What you do is you pry it up, and then while you do that, you pull it back, and they'll just pull right out. Then we'll take this white wire, route it back around here, plug it in from behind. Pull on them, make sure that they're secure. So you just take that, click it back in. And then I got a heater circuit code. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one. So that's the code 41. So when we scroll down to 41, it says primary oxygen sensor heater. 
and so I switched them back and then I did the other two wires that were next to each other that made sense and lo and behold it fixed the oxygen sensor issue. So we pull the ECU fuse, the 10 amp, set it down there and then the backup memory. This way you don't lose all your radio presets when you do it this way. So we got that taken care of, we got the timing done, uh, we got the new battery cable stuff done on the negative and the car was running good. So we've got a 1990 Honda Accord. Um, EGR system's been completely cleaned out. I've gone ahead and installed the glass clogs instead of the original press fit. So now I can do it with it in the car if I need to. Um, PCV valve gone through. Map sensor is brand new. Got a new fuel filter. Distributor is fairly new, but still having issues with drivability. Had to do a little modification for the EGR. Also, the oxygen sensor had to be rewired because the original plug went bad. And a new oil pan. Thus far, more to come. Well, should we go right. drive it? Let's do it. Let's do it. We're like, awesome. We're patting each other on the back. We're great. Awesome. Great. And then uh, all of a sudden it started to lope, you know, going up and down and up and down again. Just about to put her down, take her for a test drive, and it starts doing this. This is what it was doing last night, so we couldn't set the timing. Uh, the way you set the timing is the little marks right there. And you just do it on this side. I couldn't find the timing marks over here to save my life. I know that some of the older ones had stuff there, but what happens is it jumps the mark every time it loads. And I'm not talking about the oxygen sensor signal like it's supposed to at idle between 0.9 and 0.1. You know, it does that to... Your computer basically runs your injector so that there's a little bit of a rich condition so that it goes between rich and lean so that it's kind of in stoic at 450 millivolts where it's supposed to be so that you have some fuel hitting that catalytic converter to keep it warmed up, to warm it up quickly and then keep it that way. Anyway, after all of this and after getting out my book, I was looking in the book and in the back there is a picture, an illustration. and. It's basically an oxygen sensor and it shows the heater pad, the holder, the louver, and the zirconia tube. And so I'm like, that's cool, I've got all these oxygen sensors laying around, I want to cut one open. Because you know there's this confusion about the wires and where they go and how they do and all that. And I was thinking, the one that's for the ground and the one that's for the signal, I want to see how that's hooked up. You know, the heater circuit makes a lot of sense. It's probably just a resistor or it's just some... Uh, semiconductor metal that just gets hot when it uh, is has voltage flowing across it. So anyway, I cut one open. I'm gonna share that with you now. So as I said, I've got all kinds of oxygen sensors. I've got old school skinny ones. I've got the new fat ones. I'm sure some of these are air fuel uh, ratio sensors. But I took a couple of them and I cut them open for your entertainment and for my education. And here they are. So the long and the short of it is, you never know what you're going to get. Forrest Gump was right. Life's a box of chocolates. On this one, you've got two white wires, and those are your heater circuit. And you can see, because I cut it open. On this side, uh, you've got a black wire and a gray wire. So the white wires go to this back side, and they go to this uh, semiconductor metal stuff. And that's your heater circuit. This one, you can see, makes contact with the sensor right there. So you've got the ground wire and the signal wire. Usually your signal wire is the black wire, just so you know. Uh, but in this case, I think it is the gray. Uh, when I was cutting it in half, I got into the end of the sensor here. And in the diagram, it shows a tube. Uh, but in this one, it's more of a, it's like a stick of gum or something, but a ceramic version of it. So as you can see where I cut into this, um, you can't really see a whole lot going on on the end. You can see a little something here and a little something here. But I have more of them and I cut into another one. Uh, the other thing I was going to I'll show you that in a second here. But you can see that this, I tried to cut on it just to see what it would do because it had all these different colors. And when I cut through it, uh, it's just layered. It's got a bunch of different layers too the ceramic, I think just to enhance the properties of the ions and whatnot. 
You've got air that goes to this end of the sensor and it reads the oxygen outside of the exhaust stream. And then this is really tightly crimped and smushed onto the ceramic so that you can't get any air at all transferring between the two because they want that transfer to happen here. That's where that alternating current happens, that 0.9 volts to 0.1 volts. A uh, low number like 0.1 volts means a lean condition, low number lean condition. A higher number like 0.9 volts means that it's rich. So basically, and all it reads is just the oxygen that's passing through here. On this sensor you can see it's got holes in the end of it and then one hole here. Um, and then they'll vent through the other louver here. And then this one, we're going to look at this for a minute. It had just like a little doll here, a little Russian doll, and another one over the top of it like that. And then it had holes lining up straight through, which doesn't seem real prudent to me. But that's the way they chose to do it. But on the inside one, it has holes near the bottom at the base of the sensor. In the diagrams, it always shows these as being a tube. But when I cut into this one, and when I cut into this other one, it looks more like a white stick of gum. It looks like chewing gum. But then you turn it over and then you can see what looks like some kind of an outline of a tube. It goes up one side and then down, it loops down and then comes back up and around. So this is the actual sensor part of this. This one, I don't know if I showed this in this take particularly, but it's got two black wires. So whatever the two black wires or two white wires, those are your heater circuit. And then you've got a ground and the signal wire. So your signal wire carries that alternating current to the computer and that oscillates, as I said before, uh, between 0.9 volts and uh, 0.1 volts. Uh, and it's just to keep your catalytic converter nice and hot and running good. And then all this in the middle is your balance, your 14.7 uh, parts to one part uh, fuel. So this would be your air to fuel mixture. And your car does a great job once it gets into closed loop and it's all warmed up. This will be 600 degrees in order to have those ions be able to give up electrons and do its job. Um, when they're cold, they don't work. That's why they have a heater is so that they warm up and get you good fuel economy and better emissions faster. Mystery solved what's in the inside of these things. I just thought this would be a fun thing to share. There's all kinds of different louver designs. Like I say, this is a skinny one. It's got kind of like a punched out louver. Uh, this one's got holes in the side of it. This one has holes in the end. I believe this one is an air fuel uh, sensor. And then the other ones are oxygen sensors. One of the ways that you can tell is a heater circuit on an oxygen sensor on these old school ones. Uh, you know, which is amazing because old school to me was one black wire out the back. My 84 F-150 had that. I digress. <laughs> If it has this kind of louver, it seems like it's more likely to be an air-fuel ratio sensor. But the way you can tell is that if you check to see how many amps the heater circuit's using. If it's about 6 amps, it's probably an air-fuel ratio sensor. If it's about 2 or 3 amps, then it's probably going to be an oxygen sensor. But the guts look pretty much the same. But the air-fuel ratio sensors, they're a little bit better. They call them a wide, wide band or wide range sensor. They're different. They're not the same. Of course, the, the other ones are more expensive and do a better job or respond quicker or something. But anyway, that's, uh, that's my video about oxygen sensors and that little 1990 Honda Accord adventure in carbon monoxide poisoning. So make sure to vent properly. If carbon monoxide doesn't bother you now, it will if you get exposed to it enough. Um, when I was exposed to it on a regular basis at the Mazda dealership, uh, it didn't bother me at first and so I didn't make a big deal of it but as time went on I got more and more sensitized to it to where it became a problem. Now I just get stupid in the presence of it. It's really frustrating. So of course I spend 110 bucks on a hose and 110 bucks for a bigger hose so I can fit everything and I use them. But if there's a gross exhaust leak, you know, it's not going to do you any good. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe.